healthy people to one its new objective, preventing occupational stress in healthcare workers. Um, can you can you tell us about the key points of the project? We'll be covering identifying cause factors of stress in healthcare workers, identifying the effect that it has on healthcare workers and the quality of work that they provide, and ways to prevent stress in healthcare workers, specifically nurses. More questions? How will this project improve the health of um, nurses? Well, this project will have nurses have better quality of care because we'll prevent ways to prevent stress in healthcare workers and nurses. And that will also affect them um, in terms of the work that we can um, provide, the quality of work that we provide to patients. Because when you're not as stressed, you will be able to provide better quality of care to our patients. Thank you. Stress is a feeling of emotional and physical tension. It can come from any events or thoughts that make you feel frustrated, angry, or nervous. Stress can be a positive thing. It is your body's way of reacting to danger or a challenging situation. It can help you to meet a deadline or avoid danger. However, a long amount of stress over a long period of time can be harmful for your health and overall well-being. In certain situations, being overly stressed can lead to a feeling of burnout. The term burnout, burnout is used to describe a slow, continuous depletion of energy and strength combined with a loss of motivation and commitment after a prolonged exposure to high occupational stress. There are certain categories of jobs and careers that tend to produce higher incidence of stress or burnout. Situations and position in which there's a demand for consistent, high quality performance. These positions and careers tend to be very demanding and stressful with very little recognition or appreciation of what is being done. Also, jobs in which there's a high level of interaction with people, such as customers, clients, students, or criminal. Many of the factors mentioned above are present in the environment in nursing. Therefore, nurses deal with a high level of stress, which can in turn lead to, lead to nurses feeling burnout. Some factors that can contribute to stress are bullying in the workplace, long hours, short staff, lack of support from superiors, lack of organization in the workplace, over, overly demanding patients, So this is Robert Day. <clears throat> he has uh, he was admitted with C diff. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's had he's had bad diarrhea uh, all night. Um, a lot of ad abdominal pain. Um, hasn't been able to sleep. Um, he also has CHF. He's got edema, bi you know, bilateral edema, and uh, crackles in his lungs. Um, blood pressure uh, 142 over 87. Um, heart rate 97, pulse ox uh, 96 on room air. I'm sorry, I'm just a lot of patients tonight. Um, his family's very demanding, like, and he's also got a bit of a dementia. You know, he's older, so he w he does press the call bell a lot. So you got to make sure that he's not getting up out of bed because he's a big fall risk. Okay. Any allergies? Uh, no allergies. Hey, Jasula, do you have a second? Yes. So, I just got word this morning that Nurse Steven will be out. Again? Yeah, again. So, you're not four extra patients this morning? But I already have six patients. I understand that, but that's just how it is sometimes. You're gonna have to deal with it. Four more patients because of the short staffing. According to the American Nurses Association, it states that it's important that health facilities implement adequate staffing ratios. Nurses working long hours and heavy workloads can cause nurse burnout. It's important to have the appropriate staffing levels to reduce mortality rates, reduce patient stays, and the number of preventable events such as falls and infections. Also, it's important because with an improved workload, 
nurses can practice care to their full expertise without the pressure of fatigue. Hey, Mrs. Thurman. Um, how you feeling? My stomach still hurts. Okay. And you guys can't seem to do anything about it. I'm getting really fed up about this. Okay, so uh, I did look at your chart and it's been almost three days since your last bowel movement. And I talked to your doctor. Um, he told me that I can give you an enema. An enema? Yeah. Isn't that where you stick that up my butt? Yes, but it's gonna make you feel better. You can't do that. I do not want an enema up my butt. I know. Um, uh, take it easy. It's just gonna make it get feel away. Better. Yeah. Hey guys, could one of you please help me out uh, with this Foley catheter? I really need to know. Get a CNA to help you with that. I already asked. They're all busy. Well then. Um... You know what? I. Sorry, but I think we have that meeting we have to go to. Yes, we have yeah. meetings to attend. Um, get yeah, someone else. Bye. <sighs> oh. I'm doing a double. It's my second shift. They were short. They pretty much like begged me to stay. Yep. What brings you in today? Well, Doc, I've been really, really stressed out lately. Um, I'm a nurse, and things at work have been very stressful. Uh, I've been feeling really exhausted, and uh, having trouble sleeping at night. Can't sleep. Um, feeling anxious. Starting to feel a little depressed. Um, don't have the interest in hobbies that I that I once did, and that's really that's really a bummer. And uh, yeah, I don't hang out with my friends a lot, and as a result of the stress, I uh, you know started smoking again. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, have you been drinking? Yeah, Doc. Uh, I've actually been sober for the past three years, and. Um, a few weeks ago, I started drinking again because the stress was just too much. Okay. All right. Um, have you seen any changes in your lifestyle? Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't exercise anymore. I used to love running. Mm -hmm. Don't do that anymore. I just sit around, okay. drink. And... Now, I, you being a nurse, you, you understand that all these things right. can cause cardiac issues. I understand that, but it just... The smoking can also cause COPD so yeah. you know you have to manage your stress uh, is there any things you're doing to manage your stress um at the time no I haven't been managing my stress with okay. any coping strategies so at work you're probably you're working long hours you're yeah working long hours uh, a lot of patients a lot of hard patients the family sometimes is tough to deal with yeah, there's just a lot going on. Okay. Uh, I see that you, you gained some weight. Um, yep. Your triglycerides are high. So... Yeah, I haven't, be, haven't been eating the healthiest either. Okay. Alright. So, I feel like we we really need to start getting to a healthy diet, um, more exercise, and just start taking care of yourself, putting some time out. I'm going to try, Doc. Okay. Ooh, finally done. Man, I had so many patients today. Did I did I give the right meds to the 
like, did I check that guy's labs correctly before I gave the antibiotic? And like, did I spend too much time with the one patient? Like, oh my God. Nurses suffering from burnout have also been linked to increases in client clinical errors, such as medication, er medication mistakes, missing treatments, and missing signs and symptoms of serious changes in condition. Burnout has also been linked to failure to complete documentation and errors in documentation. I don't know. I don't know. I hope they're okay. I hope they're okay. Okay, so there's also emotion-oriented coping strategies um, that nurses utilize. And you may utilize these in your day-to-day -day life to, in, with things that stress you out. Distancing yourself, um, you know, um, distancing yourself from the situation um, emotionally, um, practicing self-control, uh, which is, you know, like you're about to should have a really negative emotion, but you, you know, you calm yourself, you know, like detachment from the situation, like a meditating in place kind of thing. Acceptance, um, you just accept that, you know, you made a mistake or or something went wrong, um, but you don't dwell on it. You know, this can be a really tough one. Um, escape avoidance, you know, that's basically like turning to drugs, alcohol, social isolation, um, just avoiding the situation um, and not facing it. Positive reappraisal, this is a big one. Um, you can look at a negative situation, like maybe, you know, you made a mistake or you know, something went wrong and, you know, somehow you're at, uh, at fault. Like, you can turn it into a positive by saying, like, I'm learning, you know, like, I'm learning from this. Um, I'm going to study up on what I need to learn and review and get better. So these are just many of the coping strategies. Okay, so there's also emotion-oriented coping strategies um, that nurses utilize. And you may utilize these in your day-to-day -day life to, in, with things that stress you out. Distancing yourself, um, you know, um, distancing yourself from the situation um, emotionally. Um, practicing self-control, uh, which is, you know, like you're about to should have a really negative emotion, but you, you know, you calm yourself, you know, like detachment from the situation, like a meditating in place kind of thing. Acceptance, um, you just accept that, you know, you made a mistake or, or something went wrong, um, but you don't dwell on it. You know, this can be a really tough one. Um, escape avoidance, you know, that's basically like turning to drugs, alcohol, social isolation, um, just avoiding the situation um, and not facing it. Positive reappraisal, this is a big one. Um, you can look at a negative situation like maybe, you know, you made a mistake or, you know, something went wrong and, you know, somehow you're at, uh, at fault. Like, you can turn it into a positive by saying, like, I'm learning, you know, like, I'm learning from this, um, I'm going to study up on what I need to learn and review and get better. So these are just many of the coping strategies. All right, so the British Journal of Nursing uh, published an article about the coping strategies uh, that critical care and emergency nurses um, utilize uh, to, with stressful situations. Problem-oriented coping strategies include planful problem-solving, thinking a problem through and coming up with a solution, seeking social support, uh, perhaps from your friends, family, or even a mentor that has more experience than you, and confrontative coping strategies. Uh, this could be both positive and negative. You know, on one hand, you might want to confront um, someone who is like a supervisor, for example, who's causing a stressful situation and just, you know, say that this is unsafe or this is stressing me out or confrontative could be very negative, you know, think of, you know, yelling or shouting or getting angry at that person.
next objective, we're going to talk about nourishing your needs. Um, so with this, uh, we'll tie in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And at the bottom, if you remember, there are the uh, physiological needs. So you got your, your rest, your food, your water. And sleep is extremely important for, you know, restoring that energy that, that you burned off when you were, you know, stressed out at work. And many nurses don't get enough sleep. They don't get their uh, seven hours of sleep minimum. So that is that is a thing that nurses should really prioritize is getting enough sleep. And if you don't, um, you know, get enough sleep the night before, a short 15 minute nap can really help with that, you know, reducing exhaustion and feeling fatigued. All right, and then we're gonna move on to the belongingness and love needs um, based off Maslow's hierarchy. So with that, you can um, meet those needs by, you know, hanging out with friends once a week, or maybe meeting up with family for uh, a brunch or dinner once a week. That way you can, you know, meet the needs of, you know, feeling close to, to others and feeling connected, that, that important sense of connection. That's very, very important. And moving up the pyramid, you have your esteem needs. And one way to, um, nourish those esteem needs is by uh, doing some activities that require, you know, skill and competence. For example, um, you can, you know, you can cook, uh, knit, do some gardening, uh, you can, you know, dance, hike, play some, play some video games. Those are some examples of, you know, activities that take skill and they can you know, boost your, boost your esteem a little bit by accomplishing those things. Hello, Conrad. Welcome to yoga class. Hello, Sensei. So, uh, what, what do you do for a living? I'm a nurse. Oh, wow. I heard that's a very demanding job. Yeah, it's very demanding. I've been stressed out lately. Oh, well, it's really good that you're here at yoga class because it can really help you, you know, de-stress. Yeah, that's what I heard. We'll work through it. Awesome. Um, and also, we do uh, some guided 30 minute meditation after yoga class, you know, at the end. So that can really help you detach and, and you know, get over the stress. And, well, you never fully get over it, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't mean, yeah. All right, so let's just get okay. into it. We're going to do right. the, the tree pose for starters. Okay. It's a pretty basic pose. And, um,. Oh, yeah. Really good for the upper legs. I, I feel it. I can feel it. And the uh, shoulders as well. And now we're going to do the reverse order pose. It's a bit of an advanced pose. But you, know, you can really feel it in your, in your knees. Yep. And, yeah. Well, that's a good one. I like that one. Yeah, that's good, right? Okay. And uh, here's the pineapple pose. Their goal is to keep patients calm and comfortable, but studies show many nurses struggle with managing their own stress. How to reduce stress, how to eat healthy, how to be advocates for the patient. Health experts believe addressing these points can help nurses provide the best quality care. Whatever we can do to help them not over empower themselves through healthy living, to be advocates to our patient for healthy living, and to fundamentally meet the mission of our of Lee Health itself. So a new program is teaching new nurses how to manage their stress as well as their nutrition and physical activity. They can also see what we offer here at the Healthy Life Center that is available to them. Part of the program is I come in and I do a whole talk around the wellness wheel. The program also addresses the importance of hydration, sleep, and teaches them the importance of self-care. Unplugging from electronics, making sure that you're filling your cup when you're not on your shift, uh, making sure that you're creating happiness, and that falls into that a component of the wheel of the mental behavior health. The goal is to teach nurses how to develop and maintain a healthy lifestyle at the beginning of their career. We definitely want to catch them early and help them be as successful as possible. The program follows resident nurses for two years to make sure they maintain healthy habits. I tell my staff all the time, I'm like, you got to keep your personal cup full so that when you come to work, you're bringing your 100% your best for our patients at the bedside. Helping nurses provide the best care to patients and to themselves.
For Lee Health, I'm Lindsay Moore. And remember, teamwork makes the dream work. Thank you for watching, and we hope that you enjoyed the presentation and learned a lot. We wish you a long, rewarding, stress-free career.